This is Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Before I go any further, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakwadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashwan Kwadash, the Holy Tongue, for the one true name of the Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Creator of all energy, being Yahweh, and that of the Messiah, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, being Yahweh Shah. I'd like to give double honors unto the Abbas and the Apostles at GMS Grand Millstone. For I've come in this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, and a sincere peace, love, blessing, salutations unto all of you hopeful and faithful members of the elect out there, doing the best to make the calling of their election sure, wheresoever you may be in these last days, man. All right? And as we just read it, hey, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, man. You see? This is our blessing. Our blessing is the Heavenly Father, man. Our blessing isn't the weapon. Our blessing isn't something carnal. You see? What makes us a powerful people, man, what makes us gods, what, what, what's going to bring us back to the state of immortality is knowing where our power is derived from, man, which is, which is from what, man, the, the, the creator of all energy, the power of power, man, the, 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 the god of gods, if you will, you see? So let me read it again, verse 17. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, right? <laughs> hey, our, our, our blessing is beyond the weapon, man. The weapon is Esau's blessing, and by it he's going to fall, man. It says, and every tongue that shall rise against thee, thou shalt condemn, right? What do the, the scriptures say about uh, uh, um, the children of Israel, man? go ahead and grab it real quick we'll jump back to this this is the book of exodus chapter 11 and verse 7 and it reads but against the children of israel shall not a dog move his tongue look at that man shall not a dog move his tongue against the children of israel it said every mouth that shall come against thee thou shalt condemn Even the weapon cannot harm you, man. This is true power right here. You see, going on it says, um, and only the elect are going to be able to see it, man. It says, against man or beast, that ye may know that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Right? Being uh, symbolic for basically the heathen and the Israelites, man. The Heavenly Father said a difference with us, man. And that difference has resulted in what? Having this blessing between us and the Heavenly Father, man. Being that seed to establish righteousness in this earth. And if that's the case, then that comes with accountability, man. We can't just understand and know that we are the the this the the 12 tribes of Israel prophesied to go through all this hell and basically awaiting the 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 our return to to the throne if you will which is why we've been set up with this grace period so we can repent and get right man right because we can't just we can't just expect the kingdom of heaven to fall on our lap again man we, we we got to learn accountability and understand that the problem began with us, man. The problem begins and ends with us, right? If this was our place, then how has the world gotten so wicked, man? Well, it's because the wicked have been in the ruler seat, man. And how do we get him out? Well, clearly, not by bearing arms. Let's go ahead and continue. It says... And every tongue that shall rise against thee, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. Right? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, man. And 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 that heritage, that's something we lost, man. This is the book of Jeremiah. 
chapter 17 and verse 6, and it reads, uh, it's like it, chapter 17 and verse 4, it says, And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So, so we totally lost that heritage, man. We've lost our inheritance. That's what that word her heritage goes into, inheritance, man. And that inheritance goes hand in hand with this blessing that what? That, that the earth would be given into our hands to rule it in righteousness, man. That is the state of the kingdom of heaven. But until then, right, we've lost our heritage. The earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. And what has happened to us? And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. So little do you know, man, you are servants. In the, uh, you are acting as servants, but you are gods, man. our heritage through it, man. But anyway, Salaki, let me go ahead. I wanted to grab this precept real quick. Um, it's the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 10 and verse 7, and it reads, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking upon the earth. Look at that. So the whole, the whole earth has been turned upside down, man. Let's go back to verse 6. Let's go back to verse 5. It says, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceedeth from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in a low place. Okay, so why is it referring to these people as rich who are sitting in a low place? And that these people are, 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 are princes, but they're walking upon the ground, and those who are upon the horses are in fact the true servants, man. Because everything's been turned upside down. You see? And the rich sitting in the low place. This is the book of Revelation. Chapter 2 and 9. And it reads. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich. So that don't make sense. How does he. How, how is somebody impoverished? How is somebody going through tribulation? But yet they're rich. Because their true state <laughs> is the inheritance of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, an inheritance so great that not even a weapon could touch you with this power in your corner, man. What do you think made Samson so powerful? Because he had beautiful dread... Er, <laughs> you know, he certainly didn't have no dreadlocks, man. But the power didn't come from his hair, man. The power came from Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Right? Do not be deceived. And that's the same thing with us, man. The power does not come from the gym. The power does not come from your many, many deep studies and breakdowns, man. The power comes from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You see? Going, hey, what did he, what did he, uh, uh, what, what was written in the book of John, man? That the Heavenly Father could raise up out of, out of rocks Israelites, man. So we are... We're expendable, man. All we are is the vessels of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Once you come into the realization of, of where the power truly is and that, that <laughs> you know, really we're worms without it, hey, then, 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 you know, you, you'll start getting your shit together, man. You see, Esau is the one that taught us the Heavenly Father's power is in a box. His arms are short, like he's got them little T-Rex arms. Like, like he can't do much, man. Oh, it's lucky. I didn't finish that verse, man. It says, And I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Right? So he's saying what? That word. That, that truly... Even though we may look impoverished, whatever the case may be, man, we are rich due to this blessing, due to this heritage, right? And he said he knows the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And he's talking about those that are portraying to be the true people of the Lord, man. Which at this day and age, you had many Israelites who were, you know, uh, uh, portraying to be the Israelites, but they didn't take on that, that, 
that spiritual circumcision, man. Well, today's day and age, what we have, we have a, a, the, the the wicked bearing rule, and whatever they done, they've assumed our position as the children of the Lord, man. They've taken that and, and, and hey, as as I like to mention, the good old quote, man, history is written by the victors. Hey, all they did is they came up in power and said, hey, these are the children of God. <laughs> And now you've, see, you've seen them run with it and, and encapsulate the world through debt and through our, uh, through our uh, 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 blood, sweat, and tears, if you will, man. Right? But this is all prophecy, man. This is prophecy that we would lose our heritage as we just were reading in the book of Jeremiah. So let's go back to it real quick. In fact, I wanted to grab this real quick, actually, because I... Uh, mentioned it earlier this is the book of isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1 and it reads behold the lord's hands are not shortened that it cannot save neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear hey so the heavenly father the world again the world's taught us esau has taught us that his arms are in a that that his power is in a box man that his arms are short he's got them t-rex arms he falls and he can't even get back up man that's likened unto their deities, man. Their idols, their things that they be praying to, man. You see, those things fall, ain't nobody's gonna pick it up. But you're wearing them all around you and all through your house. Hey, we got the true power, man. So going back to it, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 6, and it reads, we'll read it again. I keep going to verse 6 a lot. In verse 4 it says, And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever and forever. It's just a dispensation of time, right? Meaning for a very long time, man. All right, so the Heavenly Father would be uh, uh, angry with Israel for a very long time. And, and, and give us into the hand of the heathen and, and completely lose our heritage, man, to the point that now this heathen has proclaimed to be us. This is all prophecy, man. This is the book of Luke 21, and verse 24 it says, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Hey, so there you go, man. <laughs> we'd be led into the hand of our enemies. Our land would be given into their hand. Until what? Until our king. Until our Lord. Until the creator of all energy, Yahweh, sends us our conquering king, Yahweh Shai, man. Who's going to do what? What is his plan? What's, what's Yahweh Shai's plan to do, man? Revelation chapter 19. We could go, we could also go to uh Isaiah 63, right? Who's this with dyed garments from Basra? Coming from Edom. This is Revelation 19 and uh and uh 11. It says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. See that, man? He's judging and making war to do what? Verse 15, it says, And out of his mouth goeth forth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, hey, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, man. <laughs> so he's going to smite the Gentiles, man. He's going to smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty power. Hey, and there was a, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Right, so he's coming to conquer and to wage war and to establish our kingdom on this earth, man. This is Revelation 2 and 26. It says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Wait a minute. So here we go. What, 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 wait, what, what was the heritage of the saints, man? 
hey, to, 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 to basically establish righteousness in this earth, right? To, 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 to establish the truth within it, man. But what does it say? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I receiveth of my father. So eventually, man, eventually, right? When our king comes and returns, conquers this devil, delivers the elect, he's going to solidify the new covenant within the elect, ending the time of grace, causing these laws to be written within them so that they could judge in perfection, man. This is the heritage of the saints of the Most High, man. This is our role to play in the universe, man. And without this role, without our important, vital role, you see the condition of the earth around you. The earth is in need of us, man. But first, it's got to come by what? By the foolishness of preaching, as the scriptures tell us. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Is it chapter 2? Salakia is chapter 1. Chapter 1. And uh, what is it? Verse 24, if I'm not mistaken. First Corinthians chapter one and uh, verse twenty six. It says, For you see your calling, brethren, how not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things out of this world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things out of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Right. So the Heavenly Father set this up a particular way so this will be done by faith, man. Right? Because as the scriptures say, in fact, we can go ahead and grab it real quick. Um, and we'll jump back to this. This is First Samuel. Samuel chapter 14 and, uh, and verse 6 it says and Jonathan said to the young man that bear his armor come and let us go over unto the garrison of the uncircumcised it may be that Yahweh we see the word Lord in all caps like that look it up that root word goes back to the true name of the heavenly father being Yahweh it says, will work for us. For there is no restraint to Yahweh to save by many or by few. Right? There's no restraint in the Heavenly Father, man. Why? Because he is the creator of all energy. His will is the will that, that, that goes, man. Right? As it is written, it's not of he that willeth or of he that runneth, but of the Heavenly Father that giveth the prize, man. It's all up to the Heavenly Father. You see? Let me go ahead and uh, jump back to that 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21. And it reads, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So the Heavenly Father chose the foolish things to confound the wise, right? He, he chose the foolishness of preaching to be the foundation in which we're going to enter back into immortality, man. And again, is that foolishness of preaching, and the reason why it's called foolishness is because it's foolishness to this world, man. If we had a garrison of weaponry, it wouldn't be foolishness to them. They would see, oh, look, there's some hope. These people might be able to take them down. But guess what? The bless, Our blessing is not the weapon, man. What is our heritage? 
What were we created for, man? This is the book of Hebrews. This is the book of Hebrews. Uh, let's see. Hebrews chapter... Chapter 4. I believe it's chapter 4. Let's see here. Todd. This is Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hey, so this is, again, this, this is what we have, man. The word of God. Right? The foolishness of preaching. The heritage of the saints of the Most High, man. It says, even to the dividing asunder of the soul and of the spirit. So this sword, this particular sword, this thing cut your, could cut your soul and your spirit in pieces, man. <laughs> this ain't no regular sword here, man. It says, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So what sword is it that Esau is going to pull out that discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart, man? Hey, this is something that... that the saints of the most high have man this is something that we have been blessed with through the spirit of power be how by shimmy out shot man hey so if you've been if you if the heavenly father has seen mercies enough or shown enough mercy to you to where you have been illuminated to this beautiful truth man this gospel right the word gospel meaning good news is good news <laughs> that that there is hope man there is hope this ain't it, man. This queendom, sorrow, the things we go through on a day-to-day -day basis, man, these things are happening to you so that you can wake up and repent, man. Just like your fa a father ch chastises his son, so we are being chastised, man, in the form of these curses, in the form of, of, of being subject to payments, being under the foot of the oppressor of this world, man. But guess what? All through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. We've been brought back, man. We have been brought back. And now we're coming back unto the knowledge, unto this heritage that we have lost, man. Kahulayu Blaya Hao Ba Shim Yao Shai. Let's see, this is uh the book of Second Corinthians. It's lucky about that, man. This is Second Corinthians ten and four. It says, "For the weapons of, of our warfare are not carnal, right? The weapons of our warfare are carnal, man. Esau is the one that got the carnal blessing, right? Esau is the one that got the 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 sword for his blessing. And what's the modern day sword, man? You see how this devil is with his gun, with his." nuclear uh, uh, arsenal <laughs> and by it he's going to end himself man along with the coming of our king going on it says but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds that's right man my way hey, our blessing is mightier and Esau knows that our blessing is mightier Esau knows it that's why he cleaves to that gun so goddamn tight man because without it he ain't shit you see that's why he's tried so hard to to reclaim this birthright to reclaim this heritage that has that that has rightfully become ours according to prophecy man Right? It all goes back to, to Esau trying to, to basically take and control the earth. But how could one whose blessing was not the heritage of the Most High, the words of the Most High, the laws being written within him, how could somebody who's not in that role rule over the earth, but in fact somebody whose blessing is the, the complete contrary, man, the sword. Again, look at the condition of the world around you and you see where it's leading us, man.
going on, it says, verse 4, or verse 5, it says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Right? Every high thing that exalted itself against you, every high thing that looks at you a particular way. No, man. What do you, how should I say? Turn the other cheek, because guess what? Our king is going to come in and, and set the record straight, man. I was going to let nobody just beat up on you. Right? But nonetheless, the hell you go through in this world, right? Hey, the Heavenly Father is going to take care of each and every one of our enemies, man. In fact, what does the book of Romans, the 8th chapter and the 16th verse on down, tell us, man? That it would be better for them for a millstone to be hung around their neck and for them to be drowned in the sea. That would be a, a better death for a giant thousand pound stone to be put around your neck and for them to throw your ass in the sea with it man that would that would be that would be better you will be willing to take that over what the most high gives you what is to come man right as i like to say man there's no better better way to show your faith than to be patient man and know that yahweh bashim shai got us man because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. <laughs> the weapons of our warfare, let me read again, verse 5, casting down the imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashayak and having in readiness to revenge all of disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So when our obedience is fulfilled, right, then we get to a point where we're able to, to judge and we're approaching a time where we're going to judge the entire planet Earth, man. In fact, this is the book of, uh, this is first, I believe it is 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And, uh, and verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge the angels how much more things that pertain to this life Hey, there you go, man. <laughs> Let me go back to verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Hey, so the earth is going to be judged by the Israelites, man. This is 1 Corinthians 2 and... Uh, 14 it says but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him hey an example the foolishness of preaching it's foolishness to the natural man they don't receive the things of the most high man they receive the things of esau it says neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned this is why we have particular friends and family members that just won't they just won't get it man i have one in particular who this man has a lot of guns which, you know, if somebody wants to have guns, that's their business, man. But at the end of the day, the salvation doesn't come through the guns. And this guy, you know, was arguing with me about it, man. <laughs> I mean, he's a family member, so he knows the truth. You know, he, I mean, he's been told the truth. I wouldn't say he knows the truth. Because, obviously, he's over here collecting a whole arsenal of weaponry, thinking it's going to save him from Jacob's trouble, man. <laughs> you guys don't realize you are coming against a creature whose blessing is the weapon. This man got drones that he could send to your house and, and smoke you without him lifting a finger, man. You're over here thinking that your little AK-47 and your and your 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 Mac-10 is gonna do something for you, man. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Hey, foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So, hey, unfortunately, man, some of our people are just spiritually remedial, man spiritually retarded because why they judge according to their emotion they judge according to their opinion they judge according to the carnalities that they've been given by esau edom by going to the want of our enemies for all things but one third of us are coming back unto our heritage man one third of us are coming back into the knowledge of who we truly are that we had lost man knowing and understanding that the heavenly father right is the power man he didn't choose us because we're some great and powerful people. Again, what made us great is him, point blank, period. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 7. We'll end it here. It says, The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye are more in number than any other people, for ye are fewest of all people. But because... 
But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. Hey, so that, that the Most High is not a liar, man. <laughs> there is an oath that has been kept. It's been it's, it's simply been reformed through Yahweh Shai, man. Through that sacrifice, if you will. Going on, it says, Hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of Bamin and out of the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, just as he's going to deliver us from this damn devil today, man. Verse 9, it says, No, therefore, that the Lord thy power, he is a God, the faithful God, which keepeth the covenant and mercy. So we know that he's going to deliver us, man. We are living proof to the fact that we are being delivered because we've woken up to who we are, man. We've woken up out of this madness, out of this nightmare, if you will. It says, out of the matrix, right? Which keepeth covenants and mercy with him that love him, it's lucky with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. It's beautiful, man. Call like him like how about Shim Shai? Hey, so the Heavenly Father ain't forgot us, man. The Heavenly Father chose us, and that's what makes us a special people. So until you Israelites come back unto that, you will not be a special people, man. You go ahead and continue being a nigga with a gun. Because some of us are coming back to immortality, man. Some of us are coming back <laughs> to, to beyond this tiny little minute box that you know as your life, that you know as living, man. We are beyond this, man. This place is beneath us. And the world will see it soon. But the question is, will you see it now? All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Lord will this edify. Give double honors to the Yahweh and the Apostles. And peace, love, blessing, salutations to all of you hopeful and faithful members of the elect out there. Continue pushing. And Lord willing, you endure, man. Shalom.